This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, where they usually say our seasonings will take your barbecue from good to great. Great seasonings such as the Mad Hatter is a salty citrus pepper blend. It's great for those that love that salty taste with, with, a, with a nice kick at the end. Or the Cary Steak, one of my favorites, goes great on burgers, steak, just about everything. You can't go wrong with putting this seasoning that has a savory sweet heat seasoning or the smoked. Uh, the smoked ha- is a it's blended with smoked paprika and it's sure to be a great hit at your next barbecue. And the last one, the S&P Bud, your your good old salt and pepper blend with, with the right amount of spices to give it that extra flavor on all of your grilled meats. Check out those and much, much more over at the BBQ.com. Be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the SLOOPCAST also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company located in Perrysburg, Ohio, which is near Toledo. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. Integrity is at the core, uh, is the core value of what they do. Um, they import all of their high quality coffee beans directly from Colombia, Brazil, Uganda, Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, other far off lands. Uh, some of their coffees are in fact available in K cups. Some of the more popular ones are in K cups. Um, they have gift cards available if you're looking to. I, I, it's it's whatever. I was like Father's Day's over, Mother's Day's over. I I whatever. Look, birthdays. I, birthdays are year round. They got gift cards for birthdays. Uh, you, they also uh, provide the ability to do a subscribe and save service. So if you find that one coffee you really like, you can like I said get a few bucks off by doing a subscribe and save. And if you don't know which one you like yet, if you're maybe new to the iron bean experience, you can get a whole shebang, which is a huge sampler pack of a bunch of their different coffees, but you can find all that and a whole lot more over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's iron bean coffee, America's local coffee grocery. How's it going? YouTube. How's it going? Discord family. What's what's a what's a RMO nomad? A round metal object? I don't know. It's like a flying saucer. Seems to be the topic to talk about <laughs> in today. A military thing that involves drinking. Okay. I have no idea what you're talking about. Let's talk about UFOs, though. Kyle, UFOs, go. They are uh, they are unidentified, so it could be it could be anything. Yeah, oh, yeah. Can I <laughs> listen? I know, like space aliens are is a thing, but but based off of my limited understanding of string theory and like just astrophysics in general, I think it's far more likely that they're just us, but from different phases a different version of our reality thoughts sure i think it's more likely that someone figured out how to travel from one version of their reality to the version of the reality that we're in than they did figure out intergalactic space travel Hmm. interesting Hmm. so then, then by the way they're not future us a lot of yeah. people are like, well, they might be time travelers. There's really nothing to suggest that traveling backwards in time is possible. However, cross reality travel is theoretically possible. Interesting, Jared. <laughs> Interesting. All right, let's let's get into the show. <laughs> We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? 
Doing pretty well. How are you doing today, Jared? I I, I have uh, inter-reality space travel on my mind. YouTube people know what I'm talking about. The audio-only people have no clue. That's during the mysterious bit of the show that we had that conversation. <laughs> All right, Jared. Um, we got we got some news here today. Um, still in the middle of the wasteland here. We're coming up at the uh, end wasteland of... Wasteland nothing, man. Wasteland nothing. This has been one of the best Junes ever. With all the recruiting activity taking place, this has been one of the best Junes ever. Yeah, so I'm let's, let's get it. let's get right into that. Some some commits, some updates, and potentially who we think is going to be the next boom that uh, that we're going to see coming to Ohio Ohio State campus. So let's go with the first one here. Uh, we already had our one boom from last week. Um, Dallin Hay- Hayden, uh, he's the running back out of Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, he is a four-star, around a 200 um, nationally in all of the 2022 class. Uh, yeah, we, we had his name circled for quite a while now. And circled? circled. I put him in the thumbnail last week. <laughs> Who thinks that was an accident? <laughs> yeah. Well, and now he is now verbally hard committed to Ohio State. Yeah, uh, you wins. I. Uh, by the way, like 24th best running back, 235th overall, underrated dude. Promise what? me, if you don't, you, 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 tell you what, if you don't believe me, go listen to the episode a month or so back with Alex Gleitman. If if you're not going to listen to me, listen to him. Ohio State, all about Dallin Hayden. They've wanted Dal- they They would have taken a commitment from Dallin Hayden last September. Trust me, uh, he's much better than the rankings suggest. And by the way, his just, rankings aren't bad. Just to let you know, Mr. Teague, another running back out of Tennessee, was right around that same um, nationally as well. Mr. Teague for the 2018 class was 228. A lot of, a lot of crossover there, huh? Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Uh, but yep. Like I mentioned before, we had had his name circled. Jared put him in the thumbnail for last week's episode. And yeah, the, the 2022 class is really shaping up to be really, really good here. Now, you, uh, you do lose a couple. We do. Yep. Um, Carter Smith um, commits to Indiana. Here's a, here's a kid uh, right outside here of um, out of Columbus here um, in Powell, Ohio. Uh, he's he's the. Um, Let's see what do we got here. He is Hello, Ohio. He, he Hello, is out of Ohio. Pilots. Six 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 two seventy five. Um, thirty fourth best offensive tackle in in current in this current um, rankings right now. But yeah, I think Indiana got a really good player here. I, I do too. Know, what was that? I was just agreeing. I, I really like Carter Smith. Um, he. He was a plan B for Ohio State. Let, let's be honest about that. He was a good B. He was a high B. Um, he's just maybe more developmental of a player than Ohio State was willing to take it this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I- it's worth keeping an eye on Carter Smith because if other guys don't play out, if Ohio State maybe doesn't get the guys that they want more, yep. they might go back and attempt to flip Carter Smith Um We'll we'll see. Like may, maybe he's just hard for just hard set, hard locked on Indiana right now, and he's not going to decommit. Maybe 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 he's shut down for good right now. Maybe he comes back into the fold if Ohio State comes calling and is serious. I'm I'm not sure, um, yeah. but I, I do really like Carter Smith. I think Indiana gets a good player. Um, Ohio State's just maybe looking for a bit better at the moment. Yeah, and, and and Nomad brings up a good point. Well, his rankings go up with camps. Absolutely. If if he turns out to be one of those, I think he may have been asking about Dallin Hayden, but regard, I think it's a good question regardless. E- either one, either one. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. With as we mentioned numerous of times, I yeah. feel like we said this about almost on every episode here. The rankings can just are all over the place right now. I think. We think that there's a lot of players are underrated. Then that means that some players have to be overrated then. 
but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see with Carter Smith. It's still really early on in the recruiting cycle here, but yeah, we'll, we'll see, keep, still keep our eyes open on him. The, the rankings are so far behind right now. I have players in my spreadsheet that I use to keep track of all of Ohio State's targets. At least one that Ohio State has an offer or or maybe 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 about to give an offer to who's not even ranked yet. If you go to my 2023 tab and I get that that's the next recruiting class and not the current recruiting class, I get that. But at this point, this deep, this late into what is still a very early part of that cycle, there are still a ton of players and absolutely players that Ohio State has offers out to that just simply aren't ranked yet. Yeah, it's just with no camps last year and everything else. The rankings are really far behind, so yep. we we can see some huge movement from from now until who knows when. Well, speaking of huge movement, a big surprise here. Not not just not just uh, some people that were close with that predicted this person to or this this defensive end to go to Ohio State, but like all the ex- experts thought that Abar was yeah. going to go to Ohio State and oh, just out of the blues, like, oh, oh, he's going to Stanford there. And so that, that caught everybody by surprise there. Talking about uh, um, Wilfredo Abar, uh, the um, defensive end in Connecticut. I uh, Yeah, by the way, everyone, like, Everyone, because Ohio State was sure he was coming. Ohio State was 100% sure he was coming. He told Ohio State 100% sure that he was coming. Part of the deal that Ohio State had with Abar was essentially, if you're willing to commit, if you're willing to reclassify, because this is a 2022 kid who has reclassified to 2021, then... You know, they said if you're willing to commit now and you're willing to shut it down now, because Ohio State had had to go about a lot of stuff to reclass to help him get reclassified, to help him get enrolled. To, it, it was a lot of stuff they needed to go. So Ohio State essentially said, We'll take you if you're willing to reclassify, but you have to commit right now. Mm-hmm. And he proceeded to take a trip to visit Stanford that at least from Ohio State's perspective, he said he wasn't going to take that for one reason or another, whatever the I don't know if it was dishonesty or miscommunication. I don't know. I'm not I'm not pointing fingers here, but he took a visit and Ohio State was not happy about him taking that visit. And the relationship soured after that. Yeah, it soured well, real quick. It went from welcome to the family to what the are you doing? Yeah. Nomad brings up a good question here. Why do why do programs ask kids not to take other visits? Generally speaking, they they typically don't. Um, in this particular case, you're talking about a 2022 kid reclassifying to 2021. Like there's a time crunch here to to and like if you're JTT, who we'll talk about here in a second. You're the number three player in the country, maybe the number one player in the country, depending upon who you ask. He he has a bigger bargaining chip. He can get away with what he gets away with. He's one of the absolute best recruits of all time. And by the way, JTT, carry that weight, throw that weight. Use all the power that is afforded to you. So if JTT says, oh, yeah, I know I was supposed to commit back in February, but it's June and we'll see. <laughs> you say, yes, sir. <laughs> Whatever you want, best player in the country, sir. Abar doesn't have that weight to throw around. Yeah, I'm not a big I'm not a big fan of programs doing that. But in this case, yeah, it's we are a little more than a month away from fall camp starting up the camps in August. So we're we're what? Five weeks now, Jerry. We're five weeks away, around five, maybe six weeks away from yeah. Ohio State um, camps starting to open up again. So yeah, you got you. You want to get that in, in um, Abar's case here. You want to get that assurance that yep, I'm coming, but I want to make sure that 
you are 100% coming to Ohio State and put those, put that, um, that requirement in there that he wouldn't go to another campus and that, that backfired. So, well, and like Clemson says, you're not allowed to take visits. Once you commit to us, you're not allowed to take visits. That's a thing Clemson does. Mm -hmm. It's not a thing Ohio State under normal circumstances done. Um, no, I I can't remember the last time the hostage did anything like that. Told someone they weren't allowed to take visits. Yeah, I this is the only time I've ever heard of it. And again, this is a real special circumstance because yes, indeed, <laughs> this is a real special circumstance because of the reclassification. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember um, uh, Cup, like he 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 was, he was he was committed to Michigan State, and. And they're like, don't, don't go anywhere else. And he took a visit to Ohio State and they're like, all right, we don't want you anymore. And then Ohio State said, all right, come yeah, to Columbus. Gavin Cup essentially gave up a scholarship to Michigan State just for the opportunity to get an offer from Ohio State. So that's, mm -hmm. that's why I, and I get that he's been in the program for a while now and he's not really got close to cracking the starting lineup. I get all of that. But don't you yeah. ever say a bad word about Gavin Cup anywhere near me? Yeah, well, it was his last year last year, so. Is he is he gone? Yes. Okay, well, I, I, last last year wasn't necessarily having to be his last year because, you know, 2020. Yes. I just, but I guess I wasn't sure. I, 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 think, there's a I think there's a question regarding something like that too and i think we'll get into that question here later on but last one here jared jtt jt tui malau the the number one recruit in the 2021 class one of the or maybe the last three. one to really to really commit right now uh the big news canceling his trip to alabama yeah he, uh, he spurns Tuscaloosa. Um, he's coming to Ohio State. Like, I know it's not official yet. And this is the part of the show where I feel the need to point out that Kyle and I, because Kyle is taking a trip, are recording this episode way earlier than we normally would. So if he commits on Sunday, I, he may he may already be committed. I'm just saying it's a possibility. I'm not saying it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's a possibility, um, but I only ever considered Alabama a threat here. I People are like, oh, Oregon and NIL and Nike money and this and that and eh, eh. I, I did not consider Oregon or Washington or USC ever to be a threat. I've been very certain, very confident that he was coming to Ohio State for a very, very long time. Uh, in my spreadsheet, I have a, a probability score. He's been sitting there at a nine the entire time. The only time, Kyle, we moved him off of that nine was after he canceled his trip to Tuscaloosa, in which case we moved him up to a 10. He's coming. I don't know that, but I know that. He's coming. Mm -hmm. JTT's yeah. coming to Ohio State. Yep, yep. So he went, he visited every, every school he wanted to minus Alabama now. So yeah, it, I think it, it's just a matter of time right now. Listen, what the JTT and his parents are very pragmatic, very businesslike in their decision-making. There is, you know, sometimes you talk to kids and you're like, what's your priority list? Oh, campus life. Which, by the way, is code for girls. Just so we're just so we're clear, that's what campus life is is code for. Education, um, the, the geography, uh, this and that, and like they'll, they give you a lot of answers. A lot of answers. What, what's on the top of your priority list? JTT again. He and his parents, his entire crew, very pragmatic. His goal, first and foremost the entire time, unwaveringly, has been, I want to go to the NFL. I'm capable of going to the NFL. I want to go to the place that is best capable of putting me in the NFL. And if you're a defensive end, we, I said this on the last week's show, three of the last five 
defensive rookies of the year in the NFL have been Ohio State defensive ends. The fourth, number four in that list, by the way, is an Ohio State corner. That's right. Ohio State, four of the last five defensive rookies of the year in the NFL. Crazy, crazy. So, Kyle, right. this brings up a question yep. because I ask, oh, JTT might be next. He might be the next guy to commit. Um, he might commit before we release this episode. This is a thing we're concerned about. Um, mm -hmm. So we do then have to ask the question, like, who is next? Who is the next player to commit to Ohio State? So we're going to play a game. We're going to mm -hmm. play a game. We're going to play the game called who's next? Who's who's the next player to commit to Ohio State? That that last part's parenthetical. All right. Do well, we those, will you just pasted some Ask Sloopcast questions in there. Do you want to do you want to answer those questions before we play the game? Um, just a couple of them here. So yeah, uh, Buckeye that. Jared, not, not not you, Jared, but different Jared. <laughs> um, when JTT was in Columbus, why didn't he fly straight to Tuscaloosa afterwards? Uh, because, by the way, this is this is a thing that people think is a big thing. It's not a big thing. Nick Saban insisted insisted that Alabama gets last visit. Because a lot of people think that's a thing. And you know what? It, it, it didn't it didn't and work it back, out. And it backfired here. And it backfired. Because he just he decided to skip the trip altogether. Um now Alabama is um kings at recruiting. So I, I'm not gonna sit here and, and say that that Nick Saban was wrong when it comes to recruiting, because I have no right to say that. Mm -hmm. But insisting on on last visit this time, that didn't work out. Did not work out. Um, I, I mean, that, that was the flight plan. Like, he had just been on the road. And quite frankly, if his plane tickets weren't already taking him straight from, because he went straight from Columbus to Eugene, Oregon, for his Oregon visit. I have a feeling, and it's just a feeling, that had he had had he gone home in between Columbus and the Oregon visit, that he probably would have canceled the Oregon visit as well. That's just a feeling I have. Uh, Ohio State, I think, I think Ohio State wrapped things up, quite frankly. Yep, agreed. So I I think JTT moving on to our, our, our game here. I think JTT is going to be the next one here to, to uh, commit. Duncan from the discord asks, how sad is Saban? He's fine. Um, he still yeah, got, he's, he's still fine. got he's the fine. number one recruiting class in 2021. He'll be fine. Yes. Um, Buckeye Zach, uh, asks a bunch of questions along those same lines. Um, is Alabama? No, they, they still, they still got the best, recruiting class in 2021. Uh, do we actually care about Alabama and Nick Saban? Yeah, because they're the gold standard. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely the gold standard. Don't get that mixed up. Um, okay, so Kyle, let's play the game. Who's next? You, you say JTT is next? I say JTT is next, yes. I mean, it's not a, it's not a bad answer because he's certainly on a bit of a forced timeline. Uh, his, his class's national signing day was four months ago. <laughs> he's, he's on, he's on a bit of an accelerated, he's on a little bit more of a time crunch than anyone else on this list as he's the only 2021 person who is left to commit, especially since a bar is now officially both reclassified and committed to Stanford. Yep. All right. 2022 class here, Jared, you got, hold on. You got, Let's 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 leave it. Let's take an early ad break. OK. That's called a tease, you guys. Uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company, Iron Bean Coffee Company. We already did all that. Veteran owned, roast to order, or all organic and fair. We already did all that. Let's talk about some of the coffees. Um, there is the. Ride or die. It's a gentle, distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup. 
Uh, it's made from a Brazilian yellow bourbon bean. Coffee, um, uh, su superb smoothness and flavor. It's one of my absolute favorites that they have. I love a good, I think medium roast are probably my favorite. Uh, like an unflavored medium roast is is my wheelhouse. So the ride or die is certainly one of my favorites, as is the cast iron, uh, which is a medium roast coffee made with 100 percent single origin. Her Her I, I did this last week, Kyle. <laughs> Honduran Arabica beans. Uh, let's see. What else do we have in the in the medium realm? Uh, we have the Rage Against the Dying of the Light that has notes of cherry, milk, chocolate, orange, and a slight hint of rose petal. Uh, it has a medium body with a long finish, uh, leaving you plenty of time to enjoy the smooth balance of flavors and aromas. Um, guys, I promise you, this is honestly some of the best. It, it, it's it's the best coffee I've ever had. They're they're truly doing something special. Um, the Rocco, which you can get in a medium or a dark. Um, is a unique, uh, it, it, unique Ethiopian uh, that isn't a unique Af Ethiopian at its best. Um, for those that enjoy coffees that insist on being noticed, and I think that's, I think that's all the coffees. I think that's all the coffees I'm going to do for this particular ad read. That was most of the medium roast. Uh, so you can check out those coffees. Uh, there's also a medium light called the Loki and a bunch of dark roast. And I think we can talk about the dark roast in the next ad read. Uh, but you can check out all of those at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Don't let the name fool you. It is an Ohio-based company located in Cary, Ohio, just outside of Finley. Uh, good friends of ours, um, even, even a better um, beard he has <laughs> as well. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's talk about the box sets that the Mad Canadian has here. Not sure which one to go to or what, which season to get. Let's just start with the box sets. He's got three great sets for you to choose from. Kyle, if what if someone has a, a son or a nephew potentially, and they're about to go to school? What, what, what would we, what would you get? Or, or a niece or a niece? Yes, Jared. <laughs> you know, I would, I would probably give them the, you know, I, nope, I, would, letting I, would, I would give, I would give them the just send it. It's their, it's their most versatile seasoning. S and P bud. Can't go wrong with salt and pepper blend. The snore and heat. Give it that little extra kick on like chickens. Just a little bit the Cajun, the, the Cajun, good for like your, your Mexican cuisines. Whoa. Or the, what? Nope. Am I thinking the wrong one? I'm thinking of the, the wrong the one. The snore and heat is, is, is a little more uh, tex mexy. Yes. Cajun's a little more New orleans -y. Thank you. Or the smoke, or they're smoked. You can't go wrong with the smoked flavor too. Again, that is the just send it or the sweet heat. If you have if you have someone who just loves a lot of heat and sweetness, go go with the sweet heat um, box set. Four Horsemen, Discord, Old Fashioned, Two Border, all great varieties of uh, seasonings they have there. Or why not the whole hog? One of each of the seasonings over at themagnetbbq.com. Be sure to use that promo code Sloopcast10 at checkout for 10% off. Your entire order, McKinney Barbie Company, where he has your butt covered. All right, Kyle. Let's 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 resume our game. All right. Who's next? By the way, uh, from Nomad down in our live chat, um, he says he's going to go out on a limb and say it's a 2023 kid. Now, don't don't let us know who you think yet, Nomad. Don't don't do that. We don't 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 tell us who. Because we're still talking 2020, we're going to start talking about the 2022 kids, but we do have some 2023 kids on the list. So, breaks, pump them, don't slam them, just pump them. Breaks on the 2023 kids. Mm -hmm. All right, Kyle, uh, pick a 2022 kid who you think might be the next guy up. Oh boy, um. You know what? Let's go, let's go with one that's um, near. That's near the great state of Ohio here. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go with Ken Curry. Yeah, the defensive lineman out of uh, Greenswood, Indiana, just outside of the top hundred 
uh, recruit for the 2022 class here. Yeah. Uh, defensive tackle from Indiana. Um, while I, I do think he ends up at Ohio state and I feel very good about that for whatever reason. And, and I'm just, this is just me saying, I don't know anything for, for the record. I don't know anything. This, this is, this is just me saying stuff, but just sort of, I feel like he's just not in a hurry. So while I do think he does end up at Ohio state eventually, I don't know how I feel about like next, but I do like him a lot. And I do think he ends up at Ohio state. All right. Well then what do you think, Jared? Who do you think will be? Of the 2022 kids, I think I'm going to switch. I'm going to stay on the line, but I'm going to jump over to the interior offensive line and go with Ernest Green. Uh, Ernest Green is a interior offensive lineman uh, from St. John's Bosco in Bellflower, California, just outside the top 50 uh, overall, second ranked interior offensive lineman third best player from the state of California. Uh, there aren't any crystal balls on him yet, but I like him a lot. And I don't know why there aren't, I don't know why there aren't any crystal balls on him. I, I think not only is he Ohio state bound, not only is he definitely Ohio state bound. I think of all of the 2022 kids, I think he is among the top two who I expect to commit next. There's another name I like just as much as far as, Who's next? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see. Another name here to keep an eye out for who could possibly be dropping a boom. Addison Nichols, uh, another interior offensive lineman. Um, also, well, not also, sorry. Um, <laughs> this one, um, Addison is from Georgia, uh, just outside the top 100 nationally and the third best interior offensive lineman. I think Ohio State sees him potentially as a tackle. I think he'll be brought into Ohio state with the potential of being a tackle. Um, I know 24 seven lists him as an interior offensive lineman. I'm well aware of that. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying that he doesn't eventually end up there. I think that's 24 seven saying that he eventually ends up an interior offensive lineman. Um, I think Ohio State's going to give him a shot to play offensive tackle. And and yeah, I, I do have him certainly as a as a, a, a high favorite possibility to commit next. Mm -hmm. Yep. But if there's someone who I like just as much as Ernest Green, as far as like, again, the if the question is, who's next? Who is the next player to commit to Ohio State? I like Zion Branch. I like Zion Branch a lot. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, there's there's a lot of rumblings with him recently um, in favor for Ohio State. So yeah, don't, don't be surprised if um, Zion Branch um, out of Bishop Gorman uh, to to commit to Ohio State shortly too. A lot of, lot, a lot of buzz going around him. Yeah, um, the we we do actually have some crystal balls uh, already coming in. Uh, in fact, three of which, uh, since June 6th, which is, you know, it's, it's been a few days, it's been a few weeks, a couple weeks since then, but you know, you got Will Fong, Kerlick, Biggins, all, you know, Steve Will Fong being like one of the best national guys, Kerlick being one of the best Ohio guys, Biggins being, uh, another big national guy, but also maybe a little bit more West coast focused. Mm -hmm. Um, they're, I mean, and, and they have confidence with them too. Yes. Seven and eights there. Yes. High crystal ball picks. So yeah. I, I do like Ohio state a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot as, as far as getting it eventually, as, as far as getting a commitment here, eventually. Um, I, I don't, I can't decide personally between him and Ernest green again in like the who's next game. I can't decide between the two of them. I, uh, I, I just can't, but I still think I go Ernest Green, but if it ends up being Zion Branch, uh, I it's like, okay, I lost that one. I flipped a coin and I lost. <laughs> yep. Okay. 
no mad now 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 we're talking did we get oh nope we're missing one we have one more on the list for the 2022 kids you want this one kyle uh yeah love the name here love the name yeah. hero yeah. can you can you can you i'm not 100 percent sure i believe it's just ka like k-a-h and then new like a w okay i hero. think hey if anyone out there watching listening can I I watched a video and I'm pretty sure that's what was said. Kanu, please correct me if I'm wrong. All right, hero. Kanu. And don't just tell me I'm wrong. Listen, if you're gonna tell me I miss, this is for YouTube commenters. If you're gonna tell me I'm saying something wrong, follow it up with a phonetic explanation of how you think it should be said. Don't just tell me I'm wrong. I can be. I'm wrong all the time. It's fine. Here, here's another Give defensive. Give me the right answer. <laughs> yeah, here's another defensive lineman, and this one just here is just inside the top hundred here. So four star, out of California, like him a lot. Uh, so some, so some good vibes for Ohio State. Nothing really moving um, the past week or two here. So yeah, I I, I don't really anticipate him dropping a boom anytime soon but I, I still like him to ultimately come to Ohio State as well I agree um I, I think if we look at these five players from the 2022 class that we mentioned um it's those two interior defensive linemen who I both feel great end up at Ohio State eventually but are probably the two I'm least confident about it being immediate which of course means that one of them will commit like soon. Just, just to make me look stupid. All right, Nomad. Now's your time to shine. Because we, we have some 2023 kids here. Who do you think is next? Vernon. Vernon? Uh, talk about Brennan Vernon, the defensive end uh, out of Mentor, 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 Ohio. Okay, I, I like Brennan Vernon. I think Ohio State has a real shot at Brendan Vernon. Um, I, I, I don't think he's made up his mind yet, though. Um, again, I like Brendan Vernon a lot. I think Ohio State has a great shot, but Notre Dame's a real player here. Don't, don't, do, do not. Count out Notre Dame is a threat here. So, again, I, I like Ohio State more than I like Notre Dame. But I'm not even willing to say with certainty that he ends up picking Ohio State yet. Uh, Freeman going to Notre Dame helps. Yeah, uh, Freeman at Notre Dame is a huge issue for Ohio State right now. I uh, yeah, Marcus Freeman at Notre Dame is a huge issue, huge, mm -hmm. huge issue for Ohio State right now. Yep. Uh, especially, you know, if we go back and look at the 2022 class real quick. Especially if you look at uh, a guy like Emil Wagner, who, again, is like Ohio State versus Notre Dame. Uh, especially doesn't help that Emil Wagner is from Wayne. And so is Marcus Freeman. Like, it's it's tough. It's tough. It's very tough. Um, Ohio State will be very happy once Marcus Freeman is no longer at Notre Dame. Unless, yeah. of course, he ends up at Michigan State or something like that, where he's still picking out kids from Ohio. It's it's going to be tough. He's amazing at recruiting the state of Ohio. Yep. All right. Um, so who do you think? Who do you think then, Jared? If it is a 2023 kid, who do you think it is? Well, I think the, the the cheating way to do this would be to say Zachariah Branch. Now, if you're wondering, didn't didn't Jared just say Branch, but Zion Branch, Zion and Zachariah Branch? Yeah, they're brothers. Uh, Zachariah Branch, wide receiver from Bishop Gorman, um, just inside the top 100 nationally for the 2023 class. Um, inside the top 15 for the wide receivers from the 2023 class. And by the way, he's a wide receiver and 
we all know that Brian Hartline does not fuck around. Yes, they do go to the same school. Austin. Yeah, yeah they both go to Bishop Gorman. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah, yeah uh, and Ohio State has a good... Uh, the same college? Um, not necessarily, but... Well, it... I mean, yeah. Um, sometimes that works out, sometimes it doesn't. And Ohio State does not play package deals like unless unless they legitimately want both players um because Ohio State essentially let Brandon Ewers bring up one of his buddies who's a wide receiver and the kid left without an offer and the kid's not going to come to Ohio State I, just like and that that's that's one of the better friends of your generational quarterback recruits <laughs> like so if they were going to play that game they'd play that game for quentin for quentin ewers yeah. um but yeah they want to go to the same school absolutely they do um luckily in this case which is not always the case the case where like two brothers or two best friends play the package deal card is that these guys are both legitimately actually very good <laughs> Yeah, like they're Zion, both very, Zion, very good. Both of them is right around fifty. Both of them are right around fiftieth in each in each of their class nationally. Uh, if you look at the twenty four seven proper rankings, yes, that is true. Yes. Uh, the yeah, yeah, just yeah, but the uh, Zachariah is just just inside the top one hundred per the composite. But this is twenty twenty three, and the rankings are just they're undeveloped garbage at this point for 2023. So none of that matters a lot at this point. But I I think that when, and I say when Zion branch does commit to Ohio state, I think it's a package commitment. I think that they, whatever they end up doing, whether it be a graphic or a hat pick or a video, whatever they end up doing, they bet they do it together and both commit to Ohio State. I don't know when that's going to happen, but I feel real good saying that's what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's not that, and it wouldn't be the first time that we see brothers playing at the same time at Ohio State, too. Bournes played together. Yep. The Boses missed out. Yep. Just to missed out, but yeah. yep. All right. Um, staying with the wide receivers. Another kid to keep an eye out that could possibly be the next ones to drop a boom for Ohio State. It's Carnell Tate, uh, the wide receiver out of IMG Academy. Originally, originally, this kid's originally from Chicago. Yep. Moved down to moved down to go to IMG Academy. Here's another kid right inside the top 50 here. One of the best wide receivers in the class. And right now it seems to kind of be a race between Ohio State and Notre Dame. Yeah, one of those guys, by the way, Marcus Freeman can't help them here. One of those guys yeah. in that battle, one of those guys in that battle is, is, is Brian Hartline. Yes. Advantage Ohio State. Yep, exactly. But yeah, no, no, I, I think Carnell Tate, I think there's a real, real decent possibility. You know, the funny thing is, with these 2023 guys, and all four of the guys who we have pre-picked here, all four of them, I feel like, could just go at any instant. More yeah. so than the 2020 or 2022 kids. I know this is... Ba- uh, Nomad says, I know this is backwards, but does yours scare any good 2022 quarterbacks from committing to LSU or OSU? Um, I mean, 2023. Uh, yes, absolutely. Ohio State. I, I have a, my in my spreadsheet. I have a list this long of quarterbacks that Ohio State's talking to. And any of the quarterbacks who are like elite in their class. I'm not giving Ohio State much of a shot at. So to answer your question, yes, absolutely. Um, I don't think Ohio State's going to get their first or their second pick at quarterback in 2023. Yep. Because by the way, it's not just yours. Kyle McCord is there too. <laughs> yes. So they don't even have a shot at being the backup quarterback. Yep. A um, couple more kids here, Jared. Um, AJ, AJ Harris, 
Yeah. I, I, here's, a, here's a kid. Here's a kid out of Alabama. Yes. I, no matter. I don't even remember the last kid out of that state that came to Ohio state. All right. So here, here's a quick thing about, I, I, that's a great question. I have no idea. Yeah. Last time a high school kid from Alabama picked Ohio state. We're talking about a five-star player who a five-star player from Alabama. How on earth? Could, well, here's the, here's the thing you need to know about AJ Harris. Army kid. He's not really from Bama. He's from all over the country. He's an army kid. He's not, he's not like a real Bama kid. That's, that's, that's just where he and his family are currently stationed. So don't, don't take the fact that he's from Alabama concern or persuade you too hard. That's, that's the rub on AJ Harris right now. And Kyle, I, I shit you not. I think of every single class because we like, okay, there's JTT who could commit soon. Here's some 2022 kids who could commit soon. Here's some 2023. I really honestly think AJ Harris might have the best. I think might be the best pick for the first kid to commit out of this list. Who's not currently committed. Yeah. All right. I got your answer, Jared. What's that? Since like? since 2000, guess how many recruits from the state of Alabama have committed to Ohio State? I, I'm not even I'm not even going to try. I no, Nomad, I think, stole my guess. Yep, that is correct. We zero recruits since 2000 have committed to Ohio State from that. Which, state. by the way, is those are the only records you can access. So it might just be zero. Like the, the recruiting databases don't go further back than 2000. No. All right. Um, who else? You got anybody else to kind of keep your eye on? last name. Because I, well, we don't have any 2024 kids on commitment watch. So just, it, I would, if I, if I thought there was, but that, but I don't. All right. One more. Gabriel Harris, defensive tackle from Georgia. Uh, top 100 player nationally. Um, top 10 player from the state of Georgia. Chris, the ball's all over the place on, on this one, but thank you, Nomad. Uh, but he decommitted from Florida state. So the crystal balls are kind of worthless right here. Cause there's a bunch of votes left over from before he, he decommitted. Gabriel Harris came and camped at Ohio State. Ohio State said, we're not going to offer you because you're committed to Florida State. He was already committed before the camp. They go, now, if you decommit to Florida State, then we'll offer you. Because Ohio State doesn't play. Th there are recruits out there who just like to like collect offers. They want to go out there. They want to get as many offers as possible. It's a game that they play. Um, and Ohio State doesn't play that game. They're not going to offer you an offer um, if you're already committed. So guess what Gabriel Harris does? I already told you he decommitted from Florida State. Mm -hmm. Yeah, He decommitted from Florida State just so he could get an offer to Ohio State. Tell me if uh, I'm not a genius for connecting the tea leaves here. This. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not magic. I'm not, I'm not Sherlock Holmes. This is, this is some pretty easy A to B stuff here. Oh, you want an offer? Decommit. Okay, I'll do that. You, you don't do that unless you know exactly, you don't let go of that branch before you know what other branch that you're about to grab onto. Mm-hmm. So Gabriel Harris, just a matter of time. I don't have a good feeling, a good um, indication on exactly when. So I, I uh, out of all these names, I wouldn't put them in the top half, top half in the who's going to commit next game. But I think he's worth mentioning for sure. Yep. Kyle, I'm going AJ Harris. Are you sticking with your AJ JTT Harris. pick? All right. All right. Are, are you sticking with your JTT pick? I am. Yes. All right. I'll go AJ Harris. All right. 
believe it or not, Jared, we actually had some more um, official recruit visits this last weekend. Uh, <laughs> it's not just JTT, but we actually have more, more recruits actually came in. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to run down through the list here, names here. I'm not going to go into too depth about them, but just some names to keep a, an eye out of who made an official visit to Ohio State here. Uh, we have five-star cornerback Jaheim Singletary. Got to shore that committed, one up. Who's committed. Uh, committed four-star. But, committed, but Florida. Yeah five-star cornerback from the state of Florida. Yeah. He's, he's committed. <laughs> yeah. Four-star, four-star cornerback, uh, Ryan Turner, currently uh, committed as well. Again. Yeah, he's committed, but. <laughs> yes. By the way, Ohio State has three cornerbacks currently in their class. Three cornerbacks. Mm-hmm. Unless you count uh, Key Stokes, who might be a safety, might be a corner. So three and a half. I have three corner. They, they have three corners. I have all three of them on flip watch. Corner is going to be a fun one this year, you guys. We'll be watching those 2022 corners for the next year. It'll be fun. Yes. All right. Uh, other ones here. Um, defensive end, Defensive end. Ine White? I think it's a knee. I'd been a pronouncing it a nigh for a long time, but then Gleitman came on the show and didn't pronounce it a nigh, and I forget how he announced it. Uh, I haven't bothered to learn because I don't think he's coming to Ohio State. I'm going to go with Ine. I'm going to go with Ine White. He's okay. not coming to Ohio State, so I don't care. All right. Uh, defensive end, uh, Kenyatta Jackson. Offensive lineman, Cam Dewberry, which has gotten a lot of vibe recently here yeah uh, a lot of people a lot of people thinking he might go to texas a&m but keep an eye out for cam here there there's an there there's a there's an outside cha- uh, an outside chance hold on let me let me look at my spreadsheet real quick um what do i have him currently scored as uh, uh you, i have, a, I have him a three but I, three I'd probably raise him up a little bit jared i'd probably give i'd probably give him a maybe close to a five a uh, five. So I have five listed as Ohio State is in good position, but like not the leader. Okay. Is that is that about right to you? Yeah. Yes. I, I would think so. All I right, think let's so. Bump I would, him I would, five. You want to do the yeah, honor? Let's let's bump him up from bump the him up three. To a five. Here. Cam Dewberry yeah. now a five. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, probably one of the the crown jewels for the twenty twenty two. By the class way, here. I have I have a I have white as a three and I'm not moving him off of that. All right. One of the crown jewels for the 2022 class here, Jared defensive lineman, Gabriel Dindy made his visit to Ohio state this weekend as well. You don't say, or Gabe, you can go, you can go with Gabe, Gabriel, but Gabe Dindy um, at Ohio state this weekend as well. Uh, Also the last two here, defensive tackle, Chris, Chris McClellan. And safety uh, by Keith Williams. So we got a good, was that three, six, eight folks who came came with the official visits this last weekend. Yeah. Um, Kenyatta Jackson, Cam Dewberry are the two of the uncommitted guys are the two guys there who I, who I would consider uh, serious opportunities for Ohio State. I feel like they're good at safety. I, I think between Key Stokes, um, we, we already talked in this episode about Zion Branch. I feel real good Zion Branch is coming to Ohio State. Uh, and then you add uh, Nwankpa, another safety. I, I think between Branch and Nwankpa and then Key Stokes, who is a, a hybrid defensive back. Yeah. That, that, that's it for the safety class. I, I think that's your safety class right there. I, I feel very good about Branch. I feel pretty good about Nawagpa. Key Stokes is already in the class. Those are your safeties for this class. I feel real pretty good about that. Yep. All right, cool. All right. Um, I think that's it for the recruiting here. Uh, let's go ahead and answer some uh 
some ask Sloopcast questions from our listeners in our Discord. And if you want to ask a question, be sure to hit us up in the Discord at discord.thesloopcast.com. Thank you. Discord.thesloopcast.com. Thank you. Thank you for getting if you have the in front of it, but thank you. Uh, all right. First well, one see, here, Jared. We, we used to own sloopcast.com. And then like we didn't we never did anything with it. And though since someone owned it, that someone being us, and then let it lapse, someone went out there and bought it. And they're sitting on it. So I I, I could have I could have bought it from them, but I said now just do the screw it. Yep. All right. Uh <laughs> Kabuto asks us with NIL starting, will or should there be a change in the way scholarships are given out? Uh, if someone like Jay with um, Fields making bank, might they um, give their scholarship to an Olympic sport athlete? Be a good way to build cross sport brand platform goodwill, which nets them even more followers. I they it's not their scholarship. It's not. It's not like Justin Fields now owns a year scholarship to Ohio State that he can redistribute. That's it's not it's not his to give away. Um, it's it's it belongs to it, once he declares to the NFL, he forfeits. Whatever's left on. And again, they're not even guaranteed, legally speaking, guaranteed four or five years. So it's 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 not it's not a commodity that he owns to give away to someone else. Yep. Yep. And in uh, theory, yeah. if he did, it would come out of the football budget. It's it. That's a bureaucratic nightmare, mm -hmm. unfortunately. All right. Nomad asks us, are we out of the wasteland yet? Baby, we ain't even in the wasteland. <laughs> Rec recruiting in June's been way too much fun. Phone? Fun. So, oh, like I, I get that, like having all of the trips canceled sucks. It does. Uh, but silver lining, here's this thing that sucks. But the silver lining to it is that June's just been like recruiting heaven. Yep. Florida Buckeye, if JTT commits or has committed, <laughs> is the combo of JTT plus Jack the best defensive end duo we've ever brought in in a recruiting class? Uh, if we're going purely by 24-7 sports scores, yes. Yes. And it's not shot. even a question. It's yeah. uh, it, number one and number two defensive ends in the country. Is that correct? I don't think you can do it. No, actually, I think it's actually number two and number – I think if you're going by the composite, I think Jack Sawyer was – hold on. I'll look it up. I have it in the spreadsheet. Um. Jack Sawyer, and again, this is according to the composite ranking, number four overall, number three defensive end, JTT, number three overall, number two defensive end. Can't do much better than that. So if we're looking purely at recruiting scores and rankings, yes, it's not even a question. They are absolutely the best pass rushing duo maybe not even limited to Ohio State ever brought into a recruiting class. Uh, it's, it's insane that Ohio State's getting both of these guys. Now, if we actually talk about what they accomplish on the field, obviously we don't know yet. But, uh, so, Joey Bosa came in with the same class as... Um, Oh, crap, Kyle, help me out. Uh, Taekwon Lewis, I got there. That's a great combo. Uh, was Taekwon Lewis ranked as high as any of the three Sawyer, JTT? Um, no, but he was still like a top 100 player. He mm -hmm. wasn't a top 10 player the way these other guys are top 10, top five players. Still a top 100 player, still real damn good. Uh, Nick Bosa was brought in, I believe, with um, Tyreek Smith. I'm doing this off of memory, and my memory is garbage, you guys. But um, 
there have been some really good, some excellent defensive and pass rushing combos brought into Ohio State. And from a on the field production standpoint, I think it's real hard, real hard to beat Joey Bosa and Taekwon Lewis. Uh, and and I, I didn't I didn't follow recruiting enough because like, OK, we're talking about like the best Ohio State pass rushers of all time. Like who came in alongside Will Smith? I don't know. I don't remember. I wasn't following recruiting that closely. That if I had done research on this question, maybe I'd be able to answer that. I don't know. Um, yeah. and, and as far as that, like maybe Will Smith isn't even if Will Smith is from was recruited during the online service era of recruiting, which I don't I think he's like in that tweener area. Mm -hmm. um, the rankings weren't nearly as good as they are now. There weren't as many people doing them. They weren't as, as sophisticated. So it's, it's hard. It's hard to go too far back into history. Um, I'll say the best combo on the field. I'm going to say Joey Bosa and Taekwon Lewis, according to recruiting stats, these are the best two and it's not even close, but it's yeah. just recruiting stats right now. Yep. It's not, you know, it only matters so much. All right. For that, um, Matt, and for whatever it's worth, JTT could end up as a three tech defensive tackle. Just saying it's a possibility. All right. Um, next question here we have from Sun Card. I'm not going to be able to answer this, but this one's going to be to you, Jared. Okay. Build a band from bands that peaked in the 90s. You can have five artists. Oh, this requires thought. <laughs> this should have been tagged Wasteland. Okay, I'm going to have to do this quickly. Um, drummer who peaked in the 90s, give me Travis Barker from Blink-182. All right. Um, singer from the 90s who peaked in the 90s. Uh, I, I can't do this from my head. I can't do this from the top of my head. Uh, Eddie Vedder, best vocalist, or oh, Chris Cornell. I say I want Vedder for the songwriting, although Chris Cornell had the better voice. But I, I think I need to I need to stick with someone who's also a good songwriter. So I'm gonna go with Eddie Vedder. Um, actually, you know what? Just give me Pearl Jam. Just just the entire Pearl Jam lineup. Uh, there that's you fine. Go. There you go. I yep. I might be able to answer that question more intelligently had I been aware of its existence prior than 30 seconds ago. Just, just yeah, give me Pearl Jam. Can't go wrong with Pearl Jam or even Metallica, Foo Fighters. Did Metallica... Okay, commercially speaking, commercially speaking, Metallica peaked in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Creatively speaking, they peaked in the 80s. So I guess it depends upon... How you define peaked in that case. All right. All right. Um, I think that's it. I think that's all the questions we have here, Jared. Uh yeah, yeah I suppose, I suppose it is. Um is that it? Is that the end of the show? That is the end of the show here. Look so at us. We're not even that far over on time. <laughs> yeah. So go ahead and take it away here, Jared. Yeah. Uh, I want to invite everyone to check out the sloopcast.com. Yes, Kyle, that is the sloopcast.com. Uh, join our Patreon. I tell you what, I I'm not going to do the whole spiel. Forget all that. Actually, not even the Patreon. Don't worry about the Patreon yet. We do. We do want people in the Patreon, of course. If you ever considered like $3, you want to join like Nomad and Austin who are listening live right now and commenting while we talk. If you want to join them, all, all you need to do is join our Discord and our Patreon. Uh, that that's a premium service on the pay, on the uh, Discord. It's only three dollars a month. That's it. Three dollars a month, uh, and you get access to uh, the premium channels of the Discord. You get to listen live while we record. You get early access to episodes. You get to live chat with us, and you have access to the premium channels in the Discord. It's all for $3 a month, you guys. 
That's like choosing to buy or not buy two candy bars at the gas station. It's you got three dollars a month. Help us out. If you've you've, if you've enjoyed more than 10 episodes of this show. Consider 30 cents. (laughs) I just like help us out. Um, You got three dollars. But I tell you what, before you do that, don't even worry about that. Don't worry about the money part of it yet. Just come join the Discord server. Chat with us. Have fun with us. Uh, There are premium channels of the Discord server, but there are plenty of free channels on the Discord server where we talk about recruiting and we we shit on that team up north and we share dog pictures. Like, it's a lot of Ohio State stuff. It's a lot of not Ohio State stuff. It's all organized. Um, It's honestly a lot of fun. If you don't know what Discord is, it's a... I'm going to talk to my, I'm going to talk to my elder millennials. It's a chat room. There you go. It's, it's a private chat room. That's all it is. So come join the discord server. Uh, It's, it's organized. It's all, it's, 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 it's kind of a perfect size right now where there's enough people that conversations always happening, but small enough that it still feels like a community. Like you'll get to know the people you're talking to. It's a fantastic hang. I'm on it all the time. If you ever wanted to talk directly to Kyle or I discord.thesloopcast.com, it's a website that you can access. It's an app on your phone that you can access. It's a lot of fun. Just, just come hang out with us. Um, like I said, discord.thesloopcast.com. Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, not really too much here. I honestly, not really anything, but I will say July 3rd, next weekend, Jared, July 3rd is the first home game at the new crew stadium where they will take on new England. So I don't know if there's any. I think it's all sold out, but if there's tickets there, <laughs> you might, you might want to try to grab one there. Cause I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a rowdy environment. First game there going against a, um, a rival new England's kind of a rival team to Columbus. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's going to be a, a great <laughs> atmosphere game there. You, 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 you've, you, so it's, it's mostly Cincinnati at this point. And of course there's that Austin connection. Yeah, it's it's mostly it's mostly Cincinnati. That, that would point. have been that would have been the best if the first game was Austin came into town. That would have just been perfect. I. I'm just going to say someone shouldn't make the trip. It would it would not <laughs> be advisable that someone make that trip. Yes. And just just like they did with the um, historic crew stadium, it'd be a fitting way to start it by getting a Dose Cero score. Absolutely. Yes. Um, but that's it, Jared. That's it. Go crew. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music we brought to you by the Spike Drivers. If you can't make the crew game uh, and you want to uh, go see some alternative country music, uh, you can do that by going to the Roomba Cafe, which is, I think, one of my favorite little concert spots in, in Columbus. It's It's in my top three. It's in my top top four. It's in my top four places to see a concert in Columbus. Uh, it's a tiny little bar. Uh, again, you can go see the Spike Drivers at the Roomba Cafe um, Saturday, July 3rd at 8 o'clock. And uh, if you just hang here and don't turn off YouTube or your favorite podcast app, uh, you can also... I, nope, you can't hear it on YouTube. I forgot about that. because. Is YouTube, YouTube no likey music posty. So you can't hear it on YouTube, but on the podcast version, all you got to do is stick around and, and you'll hear uh, a song by the spike drivers. I don't know what song yet, but that's, that's, what's going to happen. So uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the spike drivers. You see Kyle, because There's there's no indication that it's possible to travel faster than I mean, it's you cannot travel faster than light. It's not possible. Yep. Now, there's subspace 
and there's warp drive, but that's purely theoretical. It's theoretically possible. But the fact of the matter is, is that you can't move an object faster than the speed of light. It's simply not possible. But we're pretty sure that if you've ever heard of the multiverse theory, that there are multiple parallel realities. It seems far more likely to me that whatever, if we're being visited from other planets, it's still Earth. It's just an alternative version of Earth. And that to me just feels a lot more likely that someone has figured out how to move across these parallel realities than it is to me that someone figured out how to cheat the intergalactic space limit. Do you think we'll ever see that in our lifetime? I, like, what do you mean? Like, like find, finding ways to move a lot quicker. Us figure out a way to do it. Yes. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. We're no, uh, uh-uh. no, we're not even close, man. All we're, right. we're putting robots on Mars right now. We can't even put humans on Mars right now. We're nowhere <laughs> near reshaping the, gala- the the galaxy by folding it together and traveling between the folds. I think I saw something. It was like in like a 40, maybe it was 50 year span though. Like we went from, hey, look, we're we're flying to, hey, we put a person on the moon. So maybe we'll see. Right. But also, what have we done in the 50, <laughs> 60 years since? Yeah, like the 60 years. Yeah. I, I OK, you want to talk about a horrible thing that leads to a silver lining? Not right now, because we got to end the episode, Jerry. Now you, you got me started. A horrible thing that leads to a silver lining. World War II basically pushed aviation technology decades ahead of where we would have gotten if not motivated by World War II to, and the Cold War for that matter, progress aviation. We would just now be figuring some of the stuff that we figured out. Not eh, that's that's an exaggeration, but bottom line is, is that need and in this case, you had an all out war need pushes progress, technologically speaking. Um, but yeah, that's we yeah, we do end the episode now. You got me started. And again, Kyle, I think even the path we're on, I think it's far more likely that we figure out how to move between realities far sooner than it is that we move outside a human outside of this solar system. Not a robot. And not even to the next star, just outside of this solar system, which on a galactic scale is nothing, let alone a universe scale. You good? <laughs> you good, Jared? You got you got that out of your system now. I could keep going. <laughs> Let's not. Let's end the episode. <laughs> I once again would like to thank the Spike Drivers for ending today's episode. And once again, I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's episode. Let's see. Uh, let's talk about some of the dark roast this time. Uh, there's the fierce uh, dark roast made with 100% Arabica beans that gives you the edge to slay your day. Uh, there is the Rocco. We already talked about the Rocco, but there's also a dark roast version. I don't need to read it again. We already read it. Uh, there's the Odin. Uh, the coffee that will keep you fighting long after you should have gone to Valhalla. Uh, there's the drink from the skull of your enemy. Kyle, I like this one a lot. The drink from the skull of your enemy is a tradi- traditional Indonesian coffee. Uh, it's it's edgier. It's smokier. Uh, it's got like a thick, creamy, chocolatey notes, but it also has like real strong notes of like cedar and sweet tobacco, of wine and spice. And if that sounds amazing, it's because it is. Then there's the Fear No Evil, uh, which is not just a dark roast, but a black roast. Uh, It's it's 
beyond dark. Uh, it's it's roasted to the brink of flames. Um, has like it looks it's shiny like like polished armor. Uh, it has a feel of cocoa butter. It's it's really very great. There's the fear no evil. Uh, that or excuse me, that was the fear no evil. Then there's the integrity, uh, which is like the flagship dark roast of the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Uh, makes a great espresso. If you're looking for something to turn into an espresso, I I recommend the integrity. So you can find a, they have a bunch of flavored coffees there too that we don't have the time to get into right now. Uh, but they have a bunch of flavored coffees there as well. So you can just check those out for yourself over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Let's go over a few more seasonings. That's over at themadcanadianbbq.com. The Oak Jared. What's more Midwestern than cornfields and ranch dressing? Well, that's where the Oak is. You have that with a Mad Canadian twist to it. Oak is a wonderful smoked ranch blended blend destined to make your guests say, let me just squeeze by and get some more of that barbecue. Then you have the savory. That makes you laugh every time. <laughs> it does. Uh, then you have the savory. It's what the, he puts on his pulled pork over at the McKinney Barbecue Company food truck, which, by the way, check out his social medias to find out where he and his food truck are heading to next. Well, the salty, also great unshredded chicken. Just yeah. want to throw that out there. It's a salty, savory mix that is sure to be a favorite at your next barbecue. And the Discord. Discord is, it's a mix of what the Four Horsemen is, was, with a little, with a little twist to it. It's, it's a spicy mix, but with, um, but with testing that was done, done over and over again by our good friends in our Discord here. It has a sweeter base than what the Four Horsemen is but it's great for anything, chicken, ribs, you name it, you can put it on it. Check those and much, much more over at the com. Be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 at checkout for 10% off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. <laughs>